So I kind of just looked through my book of every single season and kind of picked a handful of each one from each season. Obviously all these people can be on here because I picked like over 20 people. But I'm going to just go through quickly and just talk about why I think these people deserve to be on there or would make good TV at least. So the first one from season one is Rebecca Glasscock. I kind of had a gut feeling that she was going to be on it only because I, I follow her on Instagram and she was kind of out of the drag scene for a good minute because she was just doing makeup but you know at her boy job recently in the last couple months she's been doing drag a lot more often like she's back in missy eyes show i thought that maybe that was a sign that maybe they had kind of asked her to come back and do something because she was top three of season one and no one really talks about her at all and she was like the first like bitch of the season her and chanel were or whatever you know so i think that she would have been an interesting blast in the past to kind of bring forward into the show with all these, uh, you know, Negro blood queens, because she was there from the very beginning. And the next one from season one is Victoria Porkchop Parker. Kind of like a fan favorite-ish, kind of um, good for TV, even though she went home first in her season. I think that people talk about her enough that it's like, maybe we should just bring her back, just, you know, just to see what happened. And I would, that's kind of one I would be like, I just want to see what, what she would do now. Because I mean, everyone from season one, except for like Akasha, has like really grown like tremendously since season one. And I would love to see what Porkchop would do, unless they do some kind of like sent home first season, redemption season, that'd be kind of cool. But I don't know if I would wait a whole year for that. This is like what like Top Chef does, a weekly show online where they have two queens go against each other and then whoever wins gets to the next round and then whoever's left at the end gets to compete again on the next season. Because then that would bring views to their YouTube account more revenue, and then more hype for the show. Because at least you know one person. Moving on to season two. So my first pick was Morgan McMichaels. Blurry. I thought Morgan would be another like this obvious pick because she's Morgan, but then I remember when I was on, <laughs> when I was on Drag Race, no. When I was watching Drag Race season two, I wasn't really a big fan of Morgan either, but I think it's just because of the way they portrayed her on the show. I became a bigger fan of Morgan after the show, watching her on YouTube. When I started doing drag, I kind of looked up to her as a performer, so that was a different aspect. So I thought that it'd be a good chance for people to see her in a different light. Also one of the nicest queens I've ever met, ever. I mean, I met quite a few, but she's probably one of the nicest people I've ever met, as from Drag Race. My next one is Mystique Summers. I legitly thought Mystique was going to be on All Stars too. I really thought she was going to. I really think that she deserved to be on there because of <laughs> how things left off on season two was kind of awkward. I feel like she has, like everyone, grown so much. Like she's lost a lot of weight. Her drag looks are so put together now. Her hair is like perfect. Her face is perfect. I just like, she's gotten so good. It's like, I'm surprised she wasn't on there. Like I just assumed she was just going to be on it. Like I didn't even question it. And I'm kind of sad that she's not. I'm disappointed a little bit in that one. Again, I would just like to see what she would do on the show. The show was so different, you know, in season one and two, even three, that I would kind of like to see what these older queens would do. Even though they want to bring in more the season four, five, six queens, I'm just like, ah, oh, but I still like the old ones. And my third one for season two, my last one for season two, is Jessica Wilde. I thought she was going to be an all-stars last season. When she's not on this one, I was even more like, really? Again, I'm disappointed, but um, you know, a lot of times all these queens that could be on the show, they might have been asked, they said no, who knows? I mean, we don't all have to be on it. I would have loved to have Jessica Wilde on there. If you ever get a chance to meet Jessica Wilde in person, she's exactly how you think she would be. She's exactly how she comes on TV. She's sweet, she's funny, she's so silly. Moving on to season three. Delta Work, I thought, would be on there because for a redemption of her image, for how she was seen on the show and how people don't really look into her otherwise and people still talk about that and they think that she's a bitch and she's really not. Her humor is very specific where it's like you almost can't tell if she's joking unless you look really close and listen really close because her sarcasm is so convincing that it comes off as being authentic when it's really just being silly, which I think people just go over their head, they just don't get it. I kind of hope that, I, I think she would bring so much like one-liner commentary to the show that it's going to be missing a piece without her being on it. My second one for season three was Mariah. Again, Mariah was kind of like Tatiana, where like I didn't really see much of Mariah in the media, like on YouTube or on World of Wonder for a while, and then I just recently started seeing her again in the last couple months. Put the two and two together that I thought they were going to be on All Stars. I think Mariah is one of the most underrated queens, her and Delta, to be honest. Because season three was such a great cast. Like, season three probably had the best cast of a lot of the seasons. Yeah, there were so many good ones that it was kind of hard to stick out in that way. Um, and I think Mariah, like, is really underappreciated. 
and I think that she could have brought a lot to the show. Season four, um, there wasn't really many, but some of these other ones I'm coming up with aren't really like, my first pick, but I feel like just the way they were kind of being seen around the interwebs and stuff, I thought that you would kind of, I thought they'd be like the wild card without being too obvious. I mean, my choices for season four were either Madame the Queer or the Princess. Madame the Queer mainly because um, I've been seeing her just out of nowhere. Like I didn't even see her around anywhere until like Dragon and then the season eight's reunion we just had. She's evolved. Right? I used to see her on like the Toot and Boot thing with Raj and Raven, but then I haven't really seen her for a while. So again, that's why I kind of thought that maybe they're sneaking her in there without it being too obvious. And the Princess was another one where I thought that even though she went home early, I thought that she might have been put into the show kind of like a gone too soon kind of like let's see what else they can bring to the show. It's kind of like how Tammy Brown was, but I think Tammy Brown was on that season of All Stars because she was Tammy Brown and she was good TV. I don't really look that much into the princess, but I, but I think the queens they have for season four now are pretty much perfect, even though I would have liked to see one of them on there. Moving on to season five, I only have two, I think, because there's so many season five queens on this one. So I'm just saying, if you had to switch out a few of them for anyone else, I would probably think that Ivy Winters would have been a good one. She's so known for her presentation and her circusy performance acts and her outfits and everything, and she can sing. I thought that this would be a better opportunity for her to kind of break out of her shell a bit more and to bloom. My other one was Lanesha Sparks. I think Lanesha kind of got caught up in her season, lost focus, because I think that whenever I see anything she does, it's very refined and perfect that I'm surprised that she didn't get further in her season. I feel like it's one of those kind of like second chances that she could have been able to take and kind of redeem herself again. It's all about redemption really, you know. Season 6, I'm trying to get through these kind of quick. Uh, April Carry On. I kind of just assumed she was going to be on there too. Um, before even All Stars was even in the making, it was kind of like, oh, you know, April can go on season 2 at least. And Because everyone has such high hopes for April and she had so much to bring fashion-wise, look-wise, performance-wise. Um, but I guess when it came down to her doing like acting and stuff like that and singing, and uh, that's what was her downfall in her season, that I think that she could have overcome that for All-Stars. But it kind of sucks that she did the whole like, oh, I was made to win All-Stars too, and then she's iron in All-Stars 2's cast. Uh, the next one for season six was Ben de la Creme. I just thought that she'd be a good one because she won Miss Congeniality, she's a fan favorite, but also I think that she probably said no because of She's pretty successful right now. Like she's probably still doing her tours and stuff that she didn't really need All Stars. Um, I can see her being one that was asked and then said no. Uh, I don't think she's got any problems, <laughs> but I think it would've been cute to see her on there. My last one for season six was Trinity K. Bonet. I'm not really a huge fan of Trinity K. Bonet, but I thought that she did so well in her season that it would be one of those top tier ones for All Stars because she got far, but kind of was sent home early. The way she got sent home, I think that was kind of a controversy in itself. Like, it was right when she was getting over her hump, too. And my last one is for season 7. I didn't even include a season 8 because I thought it was too close. It was Trixie Mattel. Someone that I just assumed because of all of her fandom that they would put her on there. Kind of like Katya. Like, I thought it'd be like Katya and Trixie. Uh, but I think, wait, is Katya the only season? I'd rather have Katya and Trixie than Ginger and Katya, to be honest. But, uh... I think because for me, All Stars is kind of more about like, oh, they should have been there, or they should have done this, or, you know, they should have been at least in the top three, you know, those kind of things. And, uh, Pearl and Ginger didn't even need to be there, I think. I'd say it would have been Katya, Trixie, and uh, Violet. I, I like Violet Chachki. So, that, that's basically my little gist, my little small commentary on what I think about the new season coming up. I'm excited. It comes out August 25th? Yeah, August 25th. Oh, Eastern Time. I wonder if they're gonna have, you know, the whole online untucked. I'm really not a fan of the untucked on YouTube. I don't like having to wait a whole other day or whatever, whole like 12 hours or so to watch it. And it's not really that entertaining. I think I'm gonna do a separate video about what I would like to see and hope not to see on Drag Race All Stars 2. So I will see you guys in my next video and I hope to see you soon. I hope you guys are doing well after the events in Orlando. If any of you are affected by it, if you knew anyone personally that was affected by it, my love goes out to you. I have a lot of mixed feelings about the whole thing and how people are reacting to it. I'm trying to focus on the more positive stuff, so that's why I did this video today, because I'm excited and I think people should be excited. And even though people are being really stupid and cynical about it, that's all in the video in itself, though, so we'll see. Anyway, bye.